about something that we all are experiencing actually in, 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 in the current era. But I'll just take you back a little while. In the 60s, I was born in 58. Through the 60s, man landed on the moon. We made computers, we made amazing structures, buildings, bridges, and found all kinds of medicines, cures, all kinds of stuff, and went into space. And for some reason, and for a good reason, we felt that the sky was the limit. That was the 60s. But come the 70s, after the 60s, we suddenly found species disappearing, forests disappearing, water getting overused. Right up to the end, where we found actually the whole, the whole planet itself is warming. And it suddenly seemed as though the life systems themselves were withering. Now this is not an environmental talk, so I'm just going to give you a perspective on something. And when we came to 2000, we found that now, suddenly prices were going up, food prices are up, uh, real estate prices are up, everything is up. And we find that money itself was withering until we reached the 2000 financial collapse. So something which is quite different from paradise times, we found that ecological collapse started in the 60s, and in the 2000s and still persisting, we're finding that it is completely different to the future that we have visualized. The future we have visualized is that we're going to be having robots flying through space, living on the moon, uh, and food for everybody. Uh, it's not quite so. I explore this through two curves. And the curve where we want to reach, I call it the third curve. Before we reach the two curves, I'd like you to just look at this. This is our mind, that's our body. Our mind tells us what we would like to do, what we would aspire to do. For instance, I have to lift up something and my body has to go and pick it up there. <coughs> if I want to lift up something heavier, my mind will say pick up 20 kg, my body might be able to do it. My mind might say pick up 200 kg, my body may not be able to do it. So there's a big difference between what we imagine and what we can do. Although we all believe in motivational thinking, there are limits. The mind is unlimited, the body sadly is limited. The left curve we see here is an unlimited curve. This is our concept curve. Where we imagine something which is just shooting up towards the sky. That's all I'll say about it right now. That is our mind curve. It imagines something that's going straight up here. And it just keeps going up faster and faster towards the sky. The right curve is what has to make this curve work. That is the reality curve. And that curve goes up, reaches a middle point, and then comes down and goes to zero. This is the concept curve, this is the reality curve. And in the beginning you might feel that they are to totally different curves. This is called the exponential curve, that is called the bell curve. But if you look closely, in the beginning they are the same. Up to this point. At this point I just like to point out that there are two points of departure. One is point one, one is point two. Now what is the concept curve? What am I talking about? What is this concept? We start off by saying money is a true representation of value. Okay? So instead of me giving you apples and you giving me oranges, we have a token called money. And just starting off with that, that principle, nothing wrong with it. But beyond that, we made certain rules and certain assumptions. One is that money must grow at 3% per year. Now this is what we call time value of money. And we just made up that on our own. Okay? We said, look, money cannot just sit still, money doesn't sleep, money has to grow. And money has to grow at 3%. That 3 could be 1, it could be 7. China is growing at 9, India is trying 8. And this growth has to come out because you add the interest back to your capital every year. So it's a lakh, a lakh 7,000, a lakh 14,000 and something. That's called compounding. So it grows faster and faster. And it has to do that year after year, decade after decade, century after century, forever. This is what is, was the shape of the left curve, the shape of the exponential. So to put it in perspective, the left curve which I was talking about was the money curve. The money curve is a concept curve. It's come from our mind. It is something we insisted upon. We said we want money to grow. It has to grow. Okay, it can't just sit still. If anybody lets their money sit still, they're considered foolish or lazy. That's the money curve, it has no limits. The mind curve is a concept curve, it's a money curve, it has no limits. And that is perpetual exponential quantity to grow. When our finance minister says growth, he means that. He just doesn't mean growth. Growth can be qualitative. Growth can be cyclic. That's not what he means. He means that. I think, I, I insist that we call it that because that's a different monster altogether. And that is quite insane. 
because it just goes skywards and it has no limits. And it goes exponentially. It doesn't go like this. It doesn't go like this. It goes like this. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's an amazing book. Well, that's why you should love it. And why do we love it? We love it because at 7%, I'm just taking a simple figure of 7 because it makes the calculation easy. It could be 5% or 6, it doesn't really matter. It will make a very small difference. Your capital doubles. You're very happy. In just 10 decades, or in 10 decades, that, that would take 10 years, right? So in 10 decades, it goes up 1,024 times. That means 10 lakhs becomes 100 crores. Even if you take it at 5%, it will only take 14 years. So instead of a decade, it will become 14 years. That means 40 years. I can make 40 years now for 10 lakhs to become 100 crores. So we have got a very, very crazy, very, very difficult concept which we have accepted called time value of money. And that's our concept. If we forget something, that money just doesn't make money by itself. You have to put it into production. You need stuff, you need energy, you need inputs, you need stuff. And those inputs, they also increase. So where do, where do all these inputs come from? I know only one place. Unless you know some other place. They all come from the earth. Uh, copper, iron, coal, wood, water, clean air, petroleum. Everything comes from the earth. And the earth follows the second curve. The earth curve, you must have heard this as the bell curve, as a normal distribution curve. It's called normal distribution curve because it is normal. It is reality. It is not a concept. So whatever you have to make to make your concept work has to come from here. And this is the reality curve. This follows the laws of geology, unlike that following the laws of economics, which are man-made. This is God-made or whatever you want to call it. And this is the shape of depletion. And all this was possible due to a lot of resources, but I'm going to pin it down to oil. Because oil is an amazingly uh, powerful resource which governs all of the resources and this one thing has made this possible. When we look at the first part of the curve, our first part of the concept, it is steep and this was possible here. It was possible because of wood and coal but it was much more possible because of oil. So this is the money curve, that is the oil. I must tell you something about oil. Uh, in case you guys are really confused, this is time going this way and this is quantity going up this way. Okay, so with time your money is doubling. Every dot is doubling. That's why after 10 minutes it's 1024. Here again it's time. And oil, when we discovered it first, we were getting zero out of the ground. And then we started getting it slowly more and more and more and more and more until we reached this point. And then it goes to the top. Uh, before I go there, I just want to tell you, how do I know that this is right? How do I know that the earth behaves like this? There was a gentleman in the 50s, not now, not in the 80s, not in the 90s, not in the 2000s. There was a gentleman called King Hubbard, who was a shell oil geologist. And as early as the 50s, he had warned US and the world that every oil well behaves like this. Everything which comes from the ground behaves like this. In other words, in 50s, he predicted that US oil would peak in 1970. Everybody laughed at him. They almost ridiculed him and you know, abandoned him. But come 70s, and US oil peaked. That means US oil reached here. When you reach this point of the curve, you only used half the oil in US, or half the oil in a well, or half the oil in the world, depending what this represents. What he was talking about was, in the 70s, the US would be here. And what does that mean? It means that after the 70s, the US will only get less oil. That's the meaning of the peak. You can only use half. It's not like your petrol, it's not like your car. When your car is half tank full, you have, the second half takes you as far. Not in the case of, not in the case of what you get from the earth. I don't, I don't see in any curriculum in school where they tell you about this. We immediately assume that we will go as far in the second half as we went in the first half. That's a huge mistake. That's a huge mistake. First of all, you're going to get less. Secondly, you believe in growth, which means you're going to use more and more. 
every decade, every doubling time, you actually use as much resources as all the other doubling times combined. 2 to the power 3 is 8. What is 2 to the power 2? 7. So it's less than 8. 2 to the power 4 is 16. What is 2 to the power 3? Three, uh, 4. Uh, 3 is uh, 15. If you add up 2 to the power 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3, you become 15. And 2 to the power 4 is 16. So in every doubling time, every time our economy doubles, we use as much resources and petroleum as all the decades before that. This again is not talking about students. This is a damn good reason. Because we want to believe that it's going to go on forever. This is one thing which is just simply not accepted. Because we believe in growth, we've shaped our world on growth, we cannot live without it. That is the reason why we have succumbed to it. And this is a very vital thing. Just the way that you heard about chemical farming, there were books in the 60s, nobody trusted it. Just the way you heard about global warming, nobody trusted it. This is common knowledge today in the rest of the world. India is absolutely unaware of the fact that we entered the party late. We are on a growth uh, a pattern of 8%. And we don't know what that means. Every 7% means it doubles every decade. Your resources and your oil doubles every decade. Anyway, let's assume. So that's, that's how we went along. And I'm not calling anyone bad guys or good guys. We obviously believe it. Why did we believe it? We believe because in the beginning, this is your mind. The mind is saying, I want to do this. This is the body of the earth. The earth was able to live up to your mind because this curve does rise that fast. These, at this part, this curve is exponential. The bell curve is exponential in the first phase. So whatever you wanted to think in your mind was possible. It is because it was possible, not because we were bad guys. It is because it was possible that we did it. And when we came to a certain point, and why have I marked this point? Can anyone tell me? It is because that is the point where that curve stops behaving like this curve and starts tapering off. It says, sorry, I can't do it. It's like a runner. The coach says you have to run faster because body gives up at a particular point. Nobody can run at the speed of sound. Nobody can run at the speed of light. Obviously, there is a limit to the body. And that's what happened to the Earth's body. And that's when the ego collapse happened. I can't give you numbers. I'm giving you intuition. If somebody wants to go back into the numbers, it's very complicated. But just from understanding that by the time we had reached and stretched the Earth, taken enough coal, taken enough wood, taken enough water, taken enough, enough petroleum, taken enough copper, the Earth started because you disturbed ecosystems, you disturbed the, the pattern of rivers, you created too many large dams just to live up to this concept. That's what you did. It was possible. And the earth says, I'm trying to help you. And you did it to a point. And then the earth just couldn't. Like your body would say, I can't. That was eco -class. But we persisted. And we kept going on. We said, no, money has to keep growing. Because we made that rule. You're not going to go back on our rule. It has to grow at people's sake for you. Year after year, come up. And it goes up. Now what happens is the two curves start parting. There's a difference between your concept and there's a difference between reality. And what was building between the concept and the reality was uh, the differential was something which is not real. And that not real stuff kept going on till we reached the top point of oil, which was in 2005. And that's when the financial collapse happened. Because no longer could be the, the amount of oil that we were getting. 2005 was when we reached peak oil. The, 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 whatever is the total production of oil on this planet reached the maximum. From 2005 to two years, we were still going along with this. People still had trust in their in their in their uh, value of uh, money, but it couldn't hold on too long because we had created false things. We had created ins artificial instruments of investment. We had created SIDs, CDOs, mortgages. Because real growth was not possible. Real growth actually stopped here, and from here to here, we were actually fudging. And we were fudging it more and more and more and more and more. Till the second point, when the earth curve, the reality curve says, sorry guys, I'm going downwards. That is when this concept failed. And that is when the financial collapse happened. That just goes to show that the earth is the limit. The earth sets the limit for your concepts. You can make any concept, but the earth sets the limit. Because our concepts were only quantitative, they were not qualitative. We were only talking about quantity. You look at today, it's GDP. And the GDP curve, incidentally, I don't have that slide, I, I, I 
this stuff is exactly like this. If you go back and check it. And if you look at the world production of oil, it, it's like this. It bumps a little, goes up there, and you're up there at 2005. And then it, it's predicted to go down that. Because every oil well behaves that way. It cannot change. This is a very crucial way of looking at the difference between concept and reality. And now you can see the connection between what happened, why did, why was it that paradise time, this paradise time, this is the eco collapse, this is life withering, that is the financial collapse, and we are right here at the top. Last four years we've been at the top of the oil curve, which is why oil reached 146 dollars a barrel, which is why food prices have gone through the roof, which is why this unrest in the Middle East, which is why there is euro crisis. But people don't see it as that. We say bad governance, this thing, that thing, see, Shia Sunni, bad dictators, all that is a byproduct. What is the real reason? The real reason, the reason is that everything we do depends immensely on energy and oil. That is the real reason. So we are in a problem. We are at the top and we need to think further. But let me just show you this. This could be a near and dear one of yours and the life science of a near and dear one of yours. You don't need to be able to read what is here. You just need to see the shape. Each curve is going like this. This is his heartbeat. This is his blood pressure. This is his body temperature. Each one of his life signs are going crazily upwards. They go normal for a while, and then they start going crazily upwards. Cholesterol level, blood sugar level, body temperature, heartbeat, blood pressure. If this was happening to a near and dear one of yours, what would you say is happening to you? The patient is dying. Well, this is the earth. This is the number of forests depleted. This is a species extinction. This is the CO2 in the atmosphere. And many of them are running short of time. So you can imagine our earth is dying. And which one is, has caused it? The GDP. This red one here, this way, is the GDP. So because we insisted on a GDP pattern, which is exponential, you imposed it on everything else. It's a person like, if a person says I'm going to drink more every day, he's going to impose it on his sugar level, on his blood pressure level, on his heartbeat, on everything. And that's what happened. So everybody wants to know what the solutions are. I, want, I can't offer you solutions, but I'd like you very closely to look at this. This is impossible. That's all I can tell you. So deal with reality, that is impossible. Exponential growth perpetually Quantitative is impossible. Money just can't keep growing forever. And just to make that money grow forever, you can't just keep taking things from the earth. Just to keep that concept alive. If that happens, if we insist on this, that's why this is the depletion. You take from the earth very quickly and then it falls. What are you going to do after that? So either you deal with reality or reality will deal with it. I can't give any solutions. There are probably a thousand solutions. But one thing is for sure that when we use the word sustainability, we have to let this go. When you let that go, the depletion goes. When the depletion goes, you come to something which looks like this. And this is the third curve. We may have risen like this, but the third curve is nothing but a steady curve, which is how the earth behaved before we started this craziness. It behaved on a gentle solar cycle. It, it went on a gentle cycle of the seasons. That is where we will land up, whether we like it or not, whether we deal with reality or not. One way is going to be we go up and then crash and then it will go like this. The second way, which is when we are here and if you are sensitive, we still have to go there, but it will be gentle. Thank you.